What's up, folks? David Soto Jr. here, and this is the David Soto Jr. Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome to episode eight of the David Soto Jr. Podcast. I'm your host, David Soto Jr., coming to you from uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. It's beautiful uh, weather, finally. Uh, spring is coming. I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel it. Spring is coming. So today's topic is another, uh, you know, I don't know what my topics are supposed to be about. I don't know. Um, I write some things. I think maybe they're deep and maybe I'll talk about them. But then like last episode, I was talking about my van problems, van life problems. This episode, I'm going to talk about uh, me again. So specifically, the thing that I wrote a quote I quoted myself and I put it on Instagram and people just blew up they just loved it and the quote is I have no idea what I'm doing but I'm doing it right I have no idea what I'm doing but I'm doing it and for example here I am podcasting I I, I don't know how to podcast I don't know what I'm I, I don't have radio training broadcasting training I I, I don't know what I'm doing but I'm doing it. Here we are, episode eight. Another thing is, as a writer, now, I came from a challenged background as far as academically, right? I'm, I was kind of a dummy. Uh, it turns out I probably have or had ADD, and that was my issue. But, you know, f- for the most part, most people just look at your grades back in the 80s. You know, hey, you got Fs. You're a dummy. Stop being a dummy. Or, you know, what I heard a lot was, you have more, you're not living up to your potential, I know you're smarter than this, blah, blah, blah. I wish I'd known now where I can tell them, well, school's fucking stupid, and this process that you're trying to get me to learn things that I have no interest in is retarded. Oh, I hate it when I say that word, I'm sorry. Sorry for saying it, dropping the R word, but... I'm kind of emotional when it comes to school and how poorly I was treated as a fucking human being, because I didn't get A's, you know, it's bullshit, so, but the point of all that is that, um, I'm writing books, I'm a writer, and one of the things that I have, oops, see, realized, uh, just a few days ago is, uh, I have another book to publish, my third book in this series, Um, I was trying to write a novel. I was trying to write a full-length novel so so that it'd have substance. Like, it would be worth the the $9, $9.99 you pay for because it's thick, right? It's like, it has some weight to it. Like, this is a book. This is worth, you know, I tell my grandpa, my grandpa thinks, well, he used to think, uh, things, he valued things in weight, right? So if he paid, you know, $39 for a jacket, that jacket better have some weight to it. Like, you show him one of these down jackets that are really super light, and he's like, mm, yeah, come on, get $200, right? Because they're super light, like, no, nah, man, this ain't, you know, electronics, TVs, VCRs. Like, they got to have some VCRs. That fool never even had a VCR. But my point is, like, I guess I got a little bit, little bit of that in me. I'm like, if you're going to pay nine ninety nine or fourteen ninety nine for a book, it better be worth something, right? It better have some weight to it. And I've been publishing these uh, novels and novelettes, and I've been published anything more than... Um, 25,000 words has been the max. Uh, but here's the thing. So trying to stay on track, the theme is doing it anyways, right? Do it. Who cares if you don't? There is no, there is no rules. Fuck the rules. If there are rules, fuck them. You don't have to, um, you don't have to follow any rules. Is there rules to being an author and writer? And like, yeah, I mean, you go to school, you get good grades, you study English, then you go to college and get your master's in uh, literature. I don't know. And you go to war and grow a beard. Well, those things I did. Those things I did. But I'm making mistakes as I go along. And one of what I realized is that, and I realized this not too long ago, but I wrote Los Chocolates. This is my first fictional work it just flowed out of me I loved it I love the process I love writing it. it it's kind of what I realized like what I want to do with the rest of my life or at least 
for the next several years anyways i don't know but it was just so smooth like you hear people talk about getting in the zone. You hear about the zone state, zen state, zone state. What is that called? Anyways, time goes by, you do not know it because you're just so into what you're doing. And that's how it was when I started writing fiction. When I started writing magical realism. Um, so I named uh, my first book Los Chocolates de Esperanza de Diamante. I think it's a beautiful name. It's a beautiful title. Personally, Los Chocolates de Esperanza de Diamante. Um, and I subtitled it in a novella. It's beautiful. I love it. And the title and the book cover, it all works. It's it's great. It's great. Um, then people were already like, wait, when are you going to write your next one? Like, and so I started working on the next one and that was going to be a collection of short stories. I'm like, I'm going to write something of substance, right? I'm going to write something that's thick, something that weighs, has some weight to it. Uh, and, one of, and it was going to be a collection of short stories. One of those short stories turned out to be Esperan, um, Marisol Rivera. The full title of the book is The Whore, Marisol Rivera. I published that. That was 18,000 words. That constitutes a novelette, right? Novella, novelette, and the next size above a no novella is a novel. Well, I'm trying to get to novel status, right? Like, there's some... amount of respect that comes with writing an, an entire novel but here's the thing I don't know if I can write an entire novel I don't know if I can write a story with, with the beginning, middle, and end and there's just 90,000 words with the beginning I don't know, I have a short attention span I write short stories I was trying to write The Warrior Pierre, that's what I titled it I already had the book cover made for it and everything I was trying to write that, make that as a as at least 50,000 words. And I've, I'm there, right? I'm there at 50,000 words now. And the way things are going, maybe it could be 70,000 words or, you know, maybe more. Maybe it would be that full size. But what happened the other day was I finished a part of the book, the part where he's in Cuba, and it, I think it's good, man. I think it's good. And, and, and it's just rough draft, so there's still a lot of work to do th to it. Um... But I think it's really, really, really good. And right now, currently, it's like 22,000 words. Um, and I still have a little bit of writing. Like, I had to like wrap things up in the end. But I think, I don't think anymore, but I, I, I put the word out. I'm like, should I publish this? Like, this is another, this is as many words as, more than Marisa Rivera. And then uh, as much as, almost as much as Los Chocolates, this is another book. And people are like, no, wait, 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 wait. And I got to be honest that all of those no's uh, that people were saying online, uh, I'm thinking, man, eh, too bad. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. However, there was one yes, and that was from a reader, right? So here's the difference. A bunch of no's from people who don't read my book, who are just giving me their opinion, and a yes from a reader who wants to read that next story who wants to find out find out wants to find out what happens next that's an important yes uh, but more importantly it's my yes right i'm the one who's deciding now is it right i don't know but this is what i realized this is my thing this is my thing los chocolates is about pierre it Pierre's the character in that book. Marisol Rivera, Pierre is the character in this book. And this next story is about Pierre. And there's all kinds of stories. They're about this guy, Pierre Bernardo Los Campos. They're all about this guy who was a super soldier back in the 50s and stuff in the 40s in Latin America. I am realizing that I'm writing a book about Pierre. I'm writing a possibly 90, 100,000 page, not page, word book about Pierre, my my MC, main character. That's what authors call it. That's author talk, MC. My MC is uh, 
the main character, Pierre, is in all of these stories. He's in all of them. And I'm not writing a book about a woman who makes chocolate. I'm not writing about a virgin prostitute. I'm writing about an immortal soldier, Pierre Fernando de los Campos. And how I, well, my thing is, is that I published a little bit of his book, of his full-length novel, let's say. I published that one at a time, right? Do you hear some noise? What is that? And I publish a little bit of this book every couple months, I guess. Uh, two books last year. Uh, I have enough for two books this year. Already I have enough. So I... And, and what's going to happen is I am putting out... I'm just doing it. And that's where I'm getting, getting back to my point. I'm just doing it. I don't... I, uh, I should wait. I should write it all and put out query letters and send them to publish publishers and publishing agents and, and, and literary agents. I'm sorry. And then I should uh, do this and then uh, you know fuck all of that. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna publish my book in small sections of the book. And if it takes me already a year, going on a year and a half. If it takes me two years to finish this complete book. Because I'm self-published, because who gives a shit, I'll take all of those books and I'll put them all together in one and tell Pierre's story in one big-ass, heavy, chingon book, right? In the meantime, if you want to read one of these stories, well, just so happens I'm going to publish them as I write them. And that's not how you're supposed to do it, but that's how I'm going to do it. Because why the fuck not, right? I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. And so in doing this, I've also found, came up, up, across mistakes. And this is what people don't like to do. They don't like to make mistakes. Here I am, an author. Because of the books that I've published, because I've made mistakes, I put them out there. I'm a, I'm a published author, right? I have several nonfiction pieces of work. And my newest thing is these fictional pieces of work. And fucking bus just let off. Why are kids fucking my podcast almost every time? Every time. Anyways, so I'm trying to. I forgot what I was going to say. All these damn kids. Why you got to drop friends off in front of my friend's house? Or drop your kids off in front of my. Anyways. running joyfully to their house to their after school snack I forgot what I was trying to say oh if it wasn't for all these me making all these errors I wouldn't be where I am now I wouldn't be an author and I'm not well known right but I'm still an author with experience of publishing books self-publishing books um and to the point where people come to me for advice. And people read my books and they buy them and they post pictures of them. Not very many, all right? Not very many, but still. People buy my books, they read them, they post pictures of them on Instagram. People come to me for advice, other authors. I wouldn't be there. I wouldn't be here where people are reading my books and asking me, when's the next book coming out? And asking me for for writing advice and and. Suggest- I wouldn't be there if I didn't take those chances and make those mistakes, all right? And I'm currently at a spot right now where I got some mistakes going on that I had to fix. Los Chocolates de Esperanza Diamante needs to be changed. I need to change that title. It's, I never use the R word, like, ever. And I don't know why, I, uh, so soon as I get on, 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 on the recording, I want to say it. Um... It's ridiculous that I named the book, I titled the book in Spanish. Everybody wants to know if uh, if the book is in English. Of course it's in English. My dumbass can't write in Spanish, fool. But I titled it in Spanish. Now it's beautiful. It's a lovely sounding, you know, Esperanza, Esperanza. You don't need any noise from you back there, man. I'm trying to make a podcast over here. Got my buddy's dog in here with me. We're chilling. And we're good buds. 
but I'm trying to make a broadcast over here, man. Shit. Anyways, uh, I gotta change the title. The series is gonna be, I think, I have to, I have to name it. I think I'm gonna name the series, uh, like, Stories of Pierre Bernal de los Campos, something like that. And I have to name this next book that's in I have a lot of work. Now that I made this decision, so I have to go back and change that. Marisol, in the end of Marisol, it says, if you like this, if you want to find out what happens to Pierre next, check out this. And it has a link, or it, has, it mentions my next book, The Warrior Pierre. Well, that's not going to be the next book. Just like Marisol Rivera wasn't supposed to be the next book, uh, The Death of Doña Luz was. Uh, I have to go back and make So I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot of mistakes to to fix. I gotta fix the title. I gotta fix the subtitles. It's not no longer gonna be the Los Chocolates series because it's not about Los Chocolates is one story in this series. It happened to be the first one. I gotta do some fixing. And um again, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm doing it. I I'm gonna have my third book and a series. And it's gonna be who knows how many books are gonna come from this series. I'll just keep writing. They'll keep coming to me. I'll keep writing. Um, and one of the things I wanted to point out, I wanted to point out was I started writing this Warrior Pierre book during what's called NaNoWriMo, right? National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo. And uh, so 2017, NaNoWriMo, and I started writing it. And there was no way I was going to get 50,000 words. I'm slow. I'm kind of slow. So I ended NaNoWriMo with 26,000 words. And here, it, here I am. Uh, today's the first of March, but I, uh, I'm at. I finally hit fifty thousand in February last month. Finally hit fifty thousand. Um. But, <clears throat> so I'd go to these things called write-ins, where you go with other writers and you sit down and you write, and these people are just cranking out words and I, like we're gonna do a speed writing contest. Ready, go. And I'm like, hmm, so he, Pierre, grabs the gun from the, what do, you, what do you do with it then? So I'm thinking, like this, I'm a pantser, it's what they call a pantser. So I'm thinking about what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and then I'm like, then I write. So I'm like, time's up, what do you got? I'm like, I got 90 words. And somebody's like, I have 2,000. <laughs> like, how do you have 2,000 words, man? So anyway, so there's like people that are, that are writing and they're cranking out like, oh, yeah, yeah, I hit my 50,000 a week ago. I'm like, dude, I'm a 16,000. How'd you get 50,000? I'm not even half, you're, you're done. And I'm not, I'm not even, I'm barely halfway to the halfway point. Uh, my point is that all of these writers, right, that I was meeting and running into, and they're like, yeah, I've been doing this, this is my 10th nano arrival. I'm like, really? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've won every year. So to win, it's not a contest, but to win, you write your 50,000 words. You write your novel. And like, yeah, I've won every year in a row except last year. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so here's the thing. I started handing out bookmarks. And I'm like, oh, and people are like, oh, you're published? I'm like, well, I'm self-published. They're like, oh, wow. I'm like, you're not? You've been doing ten nano rhinos. You don't publish nothing. He goes, no, no, no. I could never, I could never publish. I could never publish my stuff. And then why? Why not? And I, oh well, you know, I, I just couldn't. I, I would never be. You would never be ready. I could never get ready in time. That's the difference, folks. That's the difference between a writer and an author. I'm an author fool. I publish my books. My books get published. Strangers read them and they like them. And I don't just, out of fear, right? I don't just, out of fear, not publish my work because I think I'll look like an asshole because I have mistakes. Trust me, folks, I've looked like an asshole many a times. Uh, you know, I. I see words that aren't there and publish it. You know, I've written a lot of articles, a lot of stuff that come back like, "Oh, did you mean to say this?" And I'm like, "No, hold on, let me go fix it." That's the thing about self-publishing; you can fix shit. Um. So this is where I'm at. I am. 
going to publish my third book in this series. I could probably publish my fourth book in this series. I have enough written. But what I want to do, and this is the last, I'm trying to wrap it up here. This is the thing that got to me. It's like, I think I could publish this within a month or two, get it proofread, get the, get the book cover done, publish it, be done. Wipe my hands of the Pierre for a while and go back to my memoir, which is damn near done, which is damn near ready for read throughs and, and book cover ordering and stuff like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to not obey the rules. I'm not going to follow. I'm not even going to follow popular opinion. I'm going to do what feels right in here with me. And I'm going to publish this third story. And in the end, maybe a year, all of these books will be put into one. And it will weigh something. It will have some weight to it. And I'll, I'm not sure what I'll name it. But it will be interesting. It will be interesting for sure. <sighs> I hope this makes sense. Folks, I'm trying to tell you to do it. I'm trying to tell you to do it. And I'm talking about writing and podcasting, but it can be whatever the fuck you were talking about, whatever the fuck interests you. Excuse my language. I said the F-bombs twice in one sentence. Damn near. Do whatever you want to do, man. You can do it. You want to be a dog trainer? <laughs> you want to be a dog trainer? Can you see that fool? There he is. Uh, for you podcasters that you can watch the YouTube video. Which is me sitting in my van. It's really not that exciting. But you can be a dog trainer. You can be, you know, Cesar Milan if you want to. You can scoop cat shit for a living. And you can do whatever you want. All you have to do is do it. <laughs> that sounds silly. I know. Now, you want to be a doctor? Well, there's, yeah, there's steps. There's steps to it. You want to be a brain surgeon? You just gotta, don't go down in, in there and root around with a stick. All right? You got you to gotta get some training. But for most of us... And so maybe the the doing it part would be going to school. I want to be a nurse. Do it. Don't go be a nurse. You know, you, you got to get some credentials. Go start doing the training that you need. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be this. I love this. It's not it's not as simple. Some people find it thing that they love and they've been doing it for so long they always know they want to do it. And there's people like me that are all of a sudden finally put pen to paper and write a little love story and at the age of 40 fucking one or something and then boom realize that you're an author that you're a writer anyways folks that's it my name is david soto jr i am out of here i want to appreciate i want to tell you that i appreciate you if you want to follow me on instagram it's at david e soto jr if you want to follow me on twitter at david e soto jr and my website where you can uh you can read my first book for free. Shit, it's free there, cheap ass. You want to read it? Uh, www.davidsotorights.com. www.davidsotorights.com. Go in there. Check out Under Fiction. You can check out my uh, my first book and some other writings that I've done. And um, that's it, folks. That's it. Get out there. Do it. Who cares if you don't know how to do it?